much uh, for this introduction and the kind words. Um, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, dear friends from the Counter Extremism Project, thank you all for joining this webinar today. And, and thanks uh, so much to Hans-Jakob Schindler and the CEP for giving me the opportunity uh, to provide some opening remarks for the discussion on the threat posed by transnational violent right-wing extremism and terrorism in Europe and the US. Looking back as early as February last year, the German Minister of the Interior considered right-wing extremism the biggest threat to German public security. And in the course of that year, we heard similar statements from security agencies in Europe, for instance, in Denmark, but also in the US as part of the FBI's assessment. And even after the recent horrible attacks by Islamist terrorists in France, Vienna, and Germany, our interior ministry reiterated this assessment. This is a clear sign that right-wing extremism and right-wing terrorism that flows from it have gained critical weight, decisive momentum, and a sustainability as a serious threat that merit further attention of politicians, practitioners, and academia. However, we did not only witness a rapid rise in violent right-wing extremism on a national level, but we also saw a growing transnational connectivity between actors and groups on the far right. In fact, it's transnational links are spanning common narratives, which are calling for cross-border unity of the so-called white race, and are being maintained, as was already mentioned, by international travel to music and martial arts, mixed martial arts events, as well as to marches, rallies, and joint training activities. And this is, it's, it's exactly this transnational connectivity, which is the reason why the Foreign Office and my division became more and more involved in the topic. But at the outset, we did not know enough about the structures, motivation of actions, uh, and uh, about individuals of, of, and groups from the right wing spectrums when it comes to their cross-border activities. So the study we commissioned with CEP on trans transnational violent right-wing extremism and terrorism was for us a starting point, but it forms part of a larger process and deliberations within the Federal Foreign Office. When we commissioned the study in March of last year, it was important for us to demonstrate that the phenomenon cannot only be viewed locally, but that the connections of right-wing extremist networks have long since reached an international dimension. And that is why our involvement in the area of violent right-wing extremism and right-wing terrorism currently aims to raise the profile of the fight against transnational right-wing extremism at an international level. The study which uh, CEP has so successfully conducted is for us a major building block in this regard. It provides a relevant and systematic research result and is an important working basis for researchers and think tanks but equally so for political and legal practitioners. On our side, we were able to introduce the topic for the first time as part of last year's council conclusions on EU external action on preventing and countering terrorism and violent extremism. In order to better jointly address this topic with our partners, we continued to raise the issue during our EU presidency in the second semester in the relevant working groups and also as part of our agenda as non-permanent member of the UN Security Council. And although both of these uh, um, memberships presidency have now ended at the end of December, we will continue to do so throughout this year. For us as next steps, it will be important to acquire broad and systematic knowledge of the transnational networks of right-wing extremists with a mid to long-term aim to develop joint action but again, I have to remind that we are still at a starting point. We need to further share information on groups and activities, develop joint understanding, definitions and categories, exchange best practices when it comes to law enforcement prevention and de-radicalization. And a major challenge in this regard for the international community is, for example, the collection of data on violent right-wing extremism and right-wing terrorism. To the same extent, and on the basis of consistent criteria. The follow-on work can therefore be a stimulus and a useful tool for our countries to achieve a more systematic look at the legal and political framework conditions in our countries 
as well as comparable standards when categorizing actions of violent right-wing extremists. Because despite the differences on the national levels, as the different country studies in the report demonstrate, there are similarities and connections which we can only tackle jointly with cross-border initiatives, whole of government approaches, and whole of society measures. We are therefore very thankful to the CEP for organizing today's exchange and also the subsequent ones with such a variety of experts and actors in their respective fields. This is all from my side at the beginning. Thank you for your attention. Looking forward very much to the briefings by Jakob and Kasper, your questions and a very fruitful discussion. Thank you.